So I'm doing a brew. For anybody who wants to know, this is going to be a German alt beer. And I've got my mascot on my shoulder. And the way I brew, I use all liquid malts. I don't like using dry. Dry, when you mix it up, it clumps. And I just always used uh, liquid. That's the way I started. So that's how I'm going to continue doing it. What I normally do is start with a half gallon of hot water right out of the tap. These have been soaking for about 40 minutes in hot water in the sink to loosen up the syrup and to get it to pour properly. And what I'll do now is just open it up and I'll pour this into the half gallon of water. You don't want to pour thick liquid into water. You don't want to fill it up with the, with the full boil amount because then it won't mix. So this pours really easy. I'm going to pour about half of it in there and stir it into the hot water. That'll help it dissolve. Now my alt recipe is 3.3 pounds of Pilsen liquid malt, 3.3 pounds, and I use Breeze, Breeze liquid malt, 3.3 pounds of Munich, and then to give it color and the caramel flavor you want in, in a German alt beer, I use 3.3 pounds of sparkling amber, and that will give it the nice golden amber color that German alts are known for. And what I'll do now is I'll dilute this with some hot water. Mix it, because I only poured half out. So now I'll just go ahead and dilute this a little bit more so it pours easy and doesn't sit and clump and scorch on the bottom when I start to boil. And then put a little bit more hot water in here. Put the cap on it. Give it a shake to get all of that sugary goodness out of here. And then I'll go ahead and do the same with the remaining two. And what I'll do is I'll take the, one of these, I'll pour half of it into the empty canister that I now have. I'll dilute both with hot water to get them diluted, just like I did this one. Give them both a shake after I rinse them and then do the same with the third one. Okay, so I filled up my pot. This is a five gallon brew pot. I fill it up to four and a half gallons because during the boil, you're gonna boil for 60 minutes. You're gonna lose roughly almost a half a gallon in a 60 minute boil. So that's going to take this down to roughly four gallons left here. And then in my fermenter, I'll make up the difference with cold clean water to bring it up to a total six. I brew six gallon batches, not five. And you can see the color is a nice rich copper brown. We're going to set this to boil. So all the foam is out. I like getting all the foam out because when you put the hops in, what will happen is as soon as you put the hops in, the hops will start to foam up. And the more foam you have in there, those hops are going to foam up and kind of boil over. The very first time I did it, we had a boil over. And there was foam everywhere. And you don't want that. Okay, so folks want to know why you start with a pot this big. You want to get as close to what this called a full wart boil 
In other words, no concentrate, your full volume that you're going to boil, because you use less hops overall, the more concentrated the sugars are from your liquid malt that you put in there, the more of the hops it's going to take to, uh, to go ahead and balance out the uh, sugars with the bitterness. So basically, the thinner the liquid is, the more room between the molecules for the flavor of the hops to go ahead and infuse, the less hops you need to use. This is going to take roughly 30 minutes to come to a boil. So, you know, this is just going to sit here until it starts a rolling boil. You don't want it to just steam. You really want it to get it going. And then we put in the hops. I'm going to be making an alt beer. We'll be posting the recipe for the alt beer. There'll be a link in the video to our Facebook page. This is Dragon Brew Supply. And the Facebook page will have the recipe for the alt printed there. I'm using a mix of three different hops up front and an alt beer has very little hop taste to it it's a very uh it's not a very hoppy beer at all it's a german ale it's an old-fashioned ale and uh, so all the hops really go up front and a little bit of hops about 20 minutes before the boil gets done to give it the flavor but not have any aroma of the hops at the start of my boil what i like to do is proof my yeast I've got a little bit of the wort that I have in the pot cooled down to, you can see it's cooled down to just about 70 degrees and that's perfect for pitching yeast and what I'm going to do is I'm going to proof my yeast so that when we put it in the fermenter in about two hours from now, once all the boil's done and we strain out all the hops, this yeast will be, this yeast will scissors. This yeast is going to be reconstituted. It's uh, going to be rehydrated. This is a dry yeast. I don't like using liquids. I like using dry. Dry has a better shelf life. So I use a dry yeast and what I do is I go ahead and rehydrate it and proof it at the same time. That way the yeast has a chance to proof. I'll see that it's active. It'll foam up and then we pour that into the fermenter when the uh, wort is cooled down enough to take the yeast. And so I'm going to rehydrate my yeast. Just give it a pour, give it a stir. And this yeast is going to start to work. And like I said, I'm going to leave this for the extent of my boil, which is going to be roughly two hours. It's going to sit here, it's going to foam up. It's going to proof, it's going to start doing its thing, and then once it's proofed in here, I'll go ahead and add it to the fermenter. When we're done, and at this point, all I'm going to do is cover this with a little bit of clear cellophane and just let it sit until I'm ready. Okay, we've got a boil going. You can see that it's up to a rolling boil. Now what I like to do so that we don't get a, a real heavy boil over, I like to turn it right down to a simmer. And the time is 9.43 in the evening right now. Now I'm going to put my hops in just a little bit at a time and you're going to see that they're going to come up to the top. If you dump all the hops in there all at once, it'll boil over. You don't want to do that. <coughs> and there we go. I've measured out all my hops ahead of time. My recipe called for a mix of Herzbrucker, Tetnay, and a touch of Fuggles. The Herzbrucker and Tetnay are considered German noble hops. Any German style ale has to have those in there. <coughs> I just turned the flame up a little bit to start the boil going again. And you can see that the hops are starting to puff up and soak up all that liquid. And now as this starts to heat back up, as I turn the flame up slowly, it's going to start to boil.
and yes, it is a green, goopy mess right now. Doesn't look too appetizing, but boy, let me tell you, when it's done and it's fermented and you get beer, it absolutely tastes wonderful. Slowly bring this up, making sure that we don't boil over. And you're going to start to see the boil starting to come up. You're going to see bubbles starting to come up. And it is exactly 9.45 right now, so it took two minutes to get the hops in there get them wet, get them going. Now normally for most other beers you don't put this many hops up front, in other words at the beginning of the boil. And right now we're going to start counting our 60 minutes from now because you can see that it's starting to come up and boil through the hops. So at this point our 60 minutes starts for our 60 minute boil. With German Alt, most of the hops get put up up front. A very little bit, maybe one ounce of a different hop that's called Saz. These are hop pellets. One ounce of those get put in with about 15 minutes left for a little bit of the hop flavor. This beer has almost no hop aroma. This is all just hops right now. These hops are going to the essential oils are going to boil off and what's going to do, this is going to provide the bittering and it's going to counterbalance the sweet taste of the wort. The sweet liquid that you get from grains is called wort, W-O-R-T, not A-R-T. A-R-T is what grows on your fingers when you get planter's worts. And this first hop addition is what will balance out all that sweet flavor so it doesn't taste like you're drinking Coca-Cola. Now a lot of people ask, is it really hard to get started making your own beer? No. You can get everything as flea market finds. This was a $3 flea market find and it's a five gallon brew pot. You don't have to spend $30 or $40 online at some brewing website. You know, you don't have to do, if you really want to buy new, you can go to Walmart and pick up a five gallon brew pot for about forty dollars but this was a flea market find for three bucks my fermenter which is right down here that fermenter was given to me by a brewer who moved up and had better equipment once he got out of doing that style fermenter he started using steel fermenters he stepped up his game and he gave me that one. so that one didn't cost me anything uh, you'll need an airlock for the top of the fermenter to keep germs out while the um, while the yeast is working and expelling CO2, you got to make sure that nothing gets back in. So that's an airlock, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, and really, all it takes is a pot to boil in, a pot to strain in, a good a good screen steel strainer because you got to strain all this crap out of the wort when you pour it from one pot to the next, and then you pour it into the fermenter. And really that's it. It doesn't really all take all that much. The only other expense is going to be bottles uh, to bottle your beer up with. But, you know, that'll happen two weeks from now when we bottle this. And I'll show you the bottling process. And even what I use to help bottle, I got for $14 at Walmart just to hold my liquid while I had made up my own little spigot with parts from Home Depot to go ahead and fill up my bottles. And there you go. Okay, we are now 40 minutes into the boil, which means there's 20 minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and you can see that all the, that big head of green foam has boiled in and it's rolling around really well. And at this point I can add these slowly and they won't boil over. This is the second edition. And Alt only gets two, it doesn't get the final at the end, normally like three to five minutes at the end, if you want the aroma of hops, if you want it to smell hoppy. And I'm avoiding that. I don't want it to smell hoppy. This is going to give it the flavor. The bittering is done. 
this is a different style hop. This is another German noble hop. It's called Saz. <clears throat> and you can see that the hop is soaking water and now it's floating up to the top and that's all going to start to boil in. If you notice, we've probably lost close to a half a gallon of water over the course of 40 minutes. You can see it was all the way up here and now it's down to there. Um, if you come over this way, you can see that our yeast has proofed nicely. It's developed a nice crossing on the top. So the yeast is doing its job and it's proofed. This, I'll knock that foam down right before I pitch it into the wort when the wort is chilled enough. Okay, our boil is done. There you go, I turn the, the flame off. And now what we're going to do is we need to strain. I've pulled a gallon of cold water to use later. And my funnel is just a, a um, juice bottle, cut the bottom off. This is low budget beer making. I use a rather unconventional method to get my wort cold quickly. I cold crash it in the fermenter. I fill my fermenter up with about halfway full of ice and then I pour the boiled wort into it. And what it does is it brings the total capacity up to five and a half gallons where I just add a little bit of water because it'll all melt. And that also cold crashes my wort and my trub drops out immediately. Within 20, 30 minutes, it's just collected on the bottom because it's a cold crash. The very hot liquid against the ice that I put in my fermenter to start. My fermenter is a heavy plastic. It's a Nalgene, uh, the company is called Nalgene. It's a Nalgene laboratory bottle used for chemistry. And it's got a very, very thick walls. It can take very hot liquids. Don't try this with a glass fermenter. You don't want to do it. You need something plastic and thick. If you're going to do it this way, you can also get a wort chiller, which looks like a big copper coil that you stick in here once uh, the boil is all done. And then you run cold water through it from your tap. You have to have a special adapter on your sink and you run cold water through it. And as you run cold water through the copper tube, the liquid inside your pot will cool down. And then you strain it and then put it in your fermenter. Okay, so now we want to strain. Be very careful, this is extremely hot. And we're going to strain the hops and as much as a trub as we can out into here. It's going to splash, go very easy. You're going to get a little bit of running down the side. You're going to lose a little bit of liquid, but it won't be that bad. This is straining fairly well, so most of the, that tells me most of the hops have already dropped to the bottom. There you go, and now it's starting to, now the screen is starting to clog up. So at this point, Just take it, roll that around, you want to get the liquid out, and the hops are going to turn into a into a tight little tight little pile of mud basically. And you can see it right there. That's the mud from the cooked hops. You just kind of roll it around and it'll kind of stick to itself like a, like silly putty. And that little lump of wet hops, I'll just go ahead and toss in the trash can. and strain a little bit more, and then we're going to have to put that in the fermenter so that we can get the rest of this strained. Okay, 
fermenter. So at this point, anything else that comes in contact with the with the uh, wort in the fermenter has to be sanitized. Sanitizing is as easy as mixing a teaspoon of Clorox bleach with a gallon of water. You soak your stuff in there for 10 minutes. It's sanitized. Sanitizing is really easy. And that's really how easy it is to make beer. There's nothing to it. We're going to pitch the yeast. We're going to put the airlock on. The airlock, I have it sanitized and stored. This gets filled with a little bit of water. This goes in there to, to keep the bubbles underwater. And then this is what keeps the bacteria from going in as your yeast is expelling CO2. And that's it. It's that easy. Thanks.